select all the CZ, CZ files I want to uh, extract and register. So it brings open this window. I select those files. I then say the type of extraction I want to do, or we compress the, the stain data to a CZ. So you don't have to do all the point by data. This is going to, uh, on this next step, ask you how many points do I want to show on your works. Um, so how many points do I want to sample there? I can jump back to. Um, on this one, I said do them all, but you can do a creepy scan where you only get uh, you don't get every point on a flat surface because you don't need every point on the floor surface. It's just going to weigh you down. And then it's going to ask me how I want to register um, buildings. So we can always essentially just uh, register using claims, which is nice, which is this question. Um, but I can also use targets and have this auto extracted as well. That then, uh, I'll go back. That will then uh, kind of run on its own, so you don't have to babysit um, the program. It'll register extract those points, which is something you just have to do each step manually. On my machine, uh, this service book that I have is about 20 minutes for these 14 scans. It's obviously the better PC you have, the faster it'll um, do this process. But then, after that, it will jump cut through this video, and these slides will be available. I think all the slides will be available after this if you're interested in this. Um, so showing you the auto orientation. So this will actually orientate your scan data to an X and Y that it defines. Generally, in buildings, you're working in X and Y planes with right angles, so it'll find that X and Y. And um, just makes it easier to, put, to A, visualize that data, cut it and segment it, as well as when you want to, if you want to, use the origin point to kind of do a one point, obviously that's not good survey practice, but you can do a one point setup. Essentially you assign a coordinate, a point, a coordinate, and your data will align to that point. Um, not, as a surveyor, not the best workflow, but something you can do quickly to put the data in the right coordinate system. What I showed you there was clicking on georeferencing, and this is that dirty georeference that I'm talking about. Um, this is going to be, I found the coordinates of the um, concrete. Um, in AutoCAD, so I found the coordinates of this concrete, uh, I guess sections. I'm then going to just select those points and quickly assign them a coordinate. I would do this for a couple points to make sure that they are set up correctly and on different system, systems. Um, if the core is off, most of the building will be off. You'll know that almost immediately. Um, but it's a good way to essentially quickly put your data in the coordinate system of the, of, of the building. So you'll see I'm using the N key to kind of isolate that view, select it, assign it a name just to make it easier, and assign coordinates. Um, down here, um, the resolution is probably too poor to see. You're going to see that there's going to be a lot of error. That's because I didn't add in a negative sign on one of the coordinates, so I'm going to go back and fix that. But I, what I was able to do there was with the, those three points, essentially uh, reference them to about a centimeter and a half, and that's what I consider for what I was doing for QHPC, even though it's not my project, was good enough to actually um, check that the model point was comparable. So you can see the error down here. If it doesn't fit, you may need to actually resurvey in or use more points. The next uh, solution I'm going to show you for this um, comparison is I'm going to import a PWG. so I can do a comparison of that point cloud to the model. After I import that DWG, I'm going to actually mesh it. So it'll come in as a bunch of entities. I'm just going to make all those entities one mesh. So that's the other thing you'll see, you'll see me do here. So I'm selecting all the mesh for all the entities, and then I'm going to create a mesh. So I compare that one, essentially that one component to everything else. Um, my core editing skills, what I didn't show you here was I segmented out the point cloud. You don't have to do that. You can compare to just the, um, that mesh entity. Uh, it takes a little more time because it's comparing every point to that mesh entity, so it's going to do a lot more math. Um, but I can set limits, so anything over two inches I'm not actually going to see on the heat map, or the heat map is what I'm going to show you next. Um, so it still will work, but that's, I just wanted to let you know why that kind of looks different than the data I was showing you five seconds before in this video. I would then, after I make that one entity mesh do a 3D inspection, I uh, select the point cloud and mesh entity, and then I just do a comparison. And here on the side, you're going to see that uh, heat map, uh, essentially blue being on, red being off by, I think, uh, an inch or two. 
Um, but that gives me a good idea of where, of how well that structure was installed. Now you can see the red here on the second floor. Um, more than likely this is the camber of that steel, which the model I have probably didn't, there was no load on the steel, so it had been actually flattened out. So you can see that as well. But it's an easy way to do QA, QC on the, on the point by data you just collected. The next thing I'm gonna do, and if you have a recap, um, probably can't see this either, uh, is exporting it to an RCP file so I can bring it into Autodesk and Revit. So with scan data, you can either bring it, you can either design off of the scan data or hopefully redesign and remodel things that are out of place with that QA, with, when you know things are out of place. So you're gonna bring in that point file into AutoCAD, either check that it's the same thing as the model or just draw for what needs to be changed. So you're gonna see me attach this RCP file Bring it in, same origin, since it was geo reference to that DWG file, it's going to come in right on top of where it was actually drawn. So, exact same thing with Revit, um, not much of a difference bringing the RCP file. I had to change the origin to be just to match it, so it's still geo reference to origin to origin, brings in that data right on top. And here's the final workflow for Tecla if you're a steel user for concrete. Because Tecla is our product, we communicate better, they use the connection to bring in to ZS and do that data more quickly and actually um, do it a little bit better, I'd say, especially since the 2018 release. You get a chance to sit in on any of those talks that would as well. But what I did there is again, just import the data. I can draw off of it or change the existing model as it is. Um, so that, that was a quick five minute video showing you how to do that fluid workflow. Again, there's a lot of button clicks there. Real works can be kind of intimidating being that there are so many buttons, so you can't forget that or where to go to next. Um, these, this will be available so you can kind of work step by step if you want to compare that. 